Welcome back to another episode of Lawyer Up and to the Right. Today, Caesar and I are going to be talking about something that we call inside of the SEO community, Parasite SEO. But to you as a lawyer, this is about how to rank a profile of yours faster than trying to rank your website in Google. Caesar, the first thing that we want to do here is let's just jump over and take a look at some SERP results here to give context. Okay, so I have three different search results pulled up for Miami DUI attorney, Boston car accident lawyer, and Boca divorce attorney. The first thing that we always see here is going to be local service ads, followed by paper ads, followed by the Google Maps pack. So these are always the primary placements that we like to focus on. Now, if you're working with an agency or you've done SEO before in the past, what they're actually optimizing for is for these results down here. We call these like the traditional blue link listings because they're just traditional blue link listings. It's not too special about them. But something that we're seeing more and more is non-attorney websites that are showing up in these search results. So we see a four result here. We see Justia here. We see fine law expertise. So there's eight organic results here for Miami do I attorney for them are non websites. We come over here and we look at Boston car accident attorneys. Again, we have the same thing going on top of the SERPs here, LSAs, local, and then coming down here and we see fine law and we see Forbes here as well. So two out of eight there. We come over here, we look at Boca divorce attorney Caesar. We see LSAs, paid search ads, local maps pack. Justia is the first result. Super lawyers, second result. Yelp is in here, expertise. So again, four out of eight or 50% of the listings that you're trying to optimize for are not websites. When we talk about why you struggle to get your SEO to work or you've spent a bunch of money on an agency and haven't gotten results, this is one of the core reasons is that the strategy that they're following is dated. They're trying to optimize you for the bottom of the SERPs where even if you do rank there, you're competing against these other types of platforms. Now, what we wanna focus on today, Caesar, is how can we get our attorney clients or our law firm websites to show up here? Because if you think about it, Justia, you can have your own profile here and people are searching for this query Boca Divorce Lawyer and they're ending up here on Justia, which is a search engine in itself, right? You can actually rank here organically and show up here and basically steal that traffic from Google and show up here. And we call this in the SEO community, Parasite SEO, because you're essentially like a little parasite inside of the SERPs that's essentially siphoning that traffic away from that query into a profile that's a non-attorney website. So Caesar, talk to me about why, talk to me about why this is happening. Like why do we see so many non-attorney websites showing up here for these search results? Yeah, we can even go a step further for additional type queries, which you're going to find is a lot of Reddit, these forum type websites. So it's clearly, this is something that we have to take notice of because Google will, Google is very close to the best when it comes to what goes into their ranking system and how they factor authority and things of that nature, but they do leave clues. So what we're seeing is obviously Google feels like these directories have enough authority and people want to go to these directories, which is why they get such high visibility in their search result. So that's the first thing, just from an SEO perspective, being on these aggregator sites, as we call them, is important because it's going to establish you, it's going to, it's going to establish your brand. Local SEO is very much about brand awareness, brand authority. So the more of these industry specifically, if we're talking about legal, we're talking about AVO, fine law, justice, law match. There's a, we've identified about 15 of ones that every attorney should be on, but then going that that step further of identifying which are the two or three that are on page one for our targeted keywords, then those are really the ones that we hone in on. Yeah, in addition to, so a lot of these types of profiles for a lot of our clients that we see, they, they usually have a profile on them, but that's really it. They're not optimized, they don't have reviews, they're just kind of there because maybe somebody else created in the past or you thought it would be a good idea to create it and just kind of left stagnant. So not only do these profiles drive active leads and eyeballs and brand awareness, but they're also indirect ranking factors with Google search too, because Google looks at these and says, oh, okay, you have profiles on all these with links to your website and you have reviews here. You are an active popular lawyer in this market. Therefore, they triangulate that and they're able to associate that to help you show up higher here in the maps pack, which is really where the money is too. But these 
can also pick up. It's kind of like a roulette, a roulette analogy. I use this a lot of the times when I'm talking to our attorney clients is that what a lot of agencies are doing is you're giving them a budget. You're like, I got $5,000 a month and you're pushing it all on black, right? All on paper, click ads, all on SEO, just on one tactic. In reality, what you have to do with search marketing now is you have to play how roulette's supposed to be played, which you take that and you spread it across the whole board because there's so many different pockets here. There's so much noise. And when somebody's searching for this, it's kind of like one of those things you see at the science museum where they drop those balls down and they fall in different places, right? These searches are getting dropped down and they're falling and they're scattering into all these different placements here based on what that user's preference is. So these are small things and free things that you can do by just building and optimizing a profile that's going to help you pick up additional eyeballs, brand awareness, you know, indirect rankings with Google, but most importantly leads. Because again, if you are searching for this again, these are not uh, hit this kind of on the head. Google's algorithm is heavily tailored to react to what people are doing in the search. So when people are searching for Boca divorce attorney, the algorithm is understanding what people are clicking on, how they're engaging with it. And then it's rewarding sites because of that. So we see Justia and super lawyer and expertise and Yelp on here because these are review aggregator websites. They're third party websites that are unbiased. I put unbiased in there because we'll talk about that in a second. But if you think about it from the search point of view, do you want to go to Justia that has with reviews and pictures and information on them? Or do you want to open up all these websites on your own and do your research? The answer is quite obvious. You want to go to these. It's pretty straightforward. So that's why these are so important. Now, Caesar, let's talk about what we do for our clients now and, and why this and how we do it. Like how can lawyers start to show up here because this is existential, right? Like you're not going to impact if just is going to rank for these. So step one, as Caesar alluded to, is just taking your main keywords and searching and finding those directories, aggregator websites that are ranking and then putting a, a tooth comb attention on top of these to optimize for. So Caesar, talk to me about how we can optimize these profiles and, and what they need to do here to show up in here. So if somebody clicks on Justia, their profile is going to get visibility. Step one is create the profile if you don't already have it. Most of these listings have a free listing option. Some of them are only premium, but for the most part, all you need to do is, you know, just as you would with Google is to submit your documentation, proof that you are in fact a lawyer, that get your business verified, go through the verification process, very straightforward, boom, you have your profile. Then you wanna optimize it as you would your Google business profile as well. That's filling everything out, that's adding images, that's making sure that everything is consistent with the name of the law firm, the address and everything like that. So it's very straightforward, very simple, just to get on these listings. Now, if you are just getting on them, most likely you're gonna, it's gonna take you some time to start getting reviews on these platforms. And a lot of these platforms are very review driven, meaning whoever has the most reviews are gonna rank on the first page of this platform. Their algorithm is not nearly as sophisticated as Google, let's say. It's not a bad strategy if, let's say for example, you're on Super Lawyers and let's say Super Lawyers is the top result in Google search, one can surmise that there's going to be a lot of people that are clicking on that result. We always look at things as from top down, what do we see in the SERP? At the very top is the local service ad. So if you're gonna put any sort of marketing dollars towards anything, that should be the first priority. Number two is Google Ads. The problem with Google Ads is they can be very expensive and they can price a lot of attorneys out. But with these with these aggregator sites, you can put a small uh, budget towards advertising and showing up at the very top while you work on the organic listing, working its way up to the first page while you get reviews. It's not to say that you absolutely have to have an, an advertising budget, but it's something to consider because it's gonna be less expensive than Google ads. And you know that people are landing on this aggregator site. And also people go directly to these websites to search for lawyers, right? So these are their own lawyer search engine yeah. in a sense. Now, I will say this, cause you kind of hit on it, is that to really get on top for all these platforms, it's a pay to play, right? So Absolutely. if you hit on it, if you want to show up on top here as premium, these are sponsored listings. They do a very good job of kind of trying to hide this as much as possible. But to Caesar's point, like these are worth it. Now, the challenge is that all these platforms have 
different media buying platforms. They have different media buying, the way that it works. Like Google's very simple. You bid on a keyword, you show up for it, mm -hmm. you pay per click or you pay per phone call. We've tested a lot of these different platforms and sometimes it's just a flat fee budget. They're like, yeah, $3,000 a month and you'll show up on top for searches. You get what you get depending on how many people are looking that month. Yeah, ones, no, and none of these rarely is it month to month is another thing to consider. So yeah. there's a minimum commitment of like three months. Yeah, exactly. You know, but again, this here, like just like in Google, there is the ads are going to show up on top. These platforms, we live in a capitalistic society. Everything here is pay to play for the most part, right? Now, that doesn't mean that there's no value in organic because all of our data shows here, for example, if somebody is searching for Boca Divorce Attorney in Google, these get about 15% of clicks. These get about 6% of clicks. And this organic listing here gets 30 to 50% of clicks and everything else kind of scatters down for the rest. So there, th that happens for a number of reasons. One is that people know that these are sponsored. They see it, they're not dumb. And just consumer behavior, we would rather find an organic listing. So it's the same thing in here too, is that these are sponsored. Like we can see it again, they do a very good job of trying to hide these. You know, they put this little badge here for sponsored and they get the little top rated badge here, but you can see six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So there's a lot, but that all down here in 15, that drops off. So again, with these platforms, a lot of them are pay to play if you want to get to the very, very top. However, again, this is a small free thing that you can do. And again, we started doing this for all of our clients. We have a list of these, we call them aggregators because they're review aggregators. Any platform that you can get reviews on, they're incredibly important. And getting reviews on these platforms too is actually easier than getting on Google. Google's very strict. It's very easy to get reviews declined. We find that getting reviews on these platforms is far easier. And you'll actually notice here too, they have uh, client reviews. One, I saw one of them here was peer reviews. Yeah. So this one here is two peer reviews, right? So these were actually from other attorneys that he got the reviews from, not necessarily from client reviews. They did yeah. And if you look at these review counts in comparison to Google, they're typically very low. So it's just a lower barrier than if you have to push a boulder up the hill to get over 100 re reviews on Google business in order to compete with some of the guys that are already up there with that many reviews. It takes way less usually on these platforms yeah. to out to outnumber the the existing attorneys. and you can see that right so these first four are all, all sponsored here that's great but what do you notice about the guy who's ranking first he's the only one who actually has reviews on this platform so i don't think it takes nearly <laughs> as much it doesn't take that much to your point yeah. it's, it's far less competition now granted there's less volume here but again for some of you that are really struggling to make the economics of search marketing work because it's expensive. These are small things that you can do. And again, that we do for our clients. So what we do for our clients is we do a very deep onboarding process when we fill out Google business profile, because on your Google business profile, there's images, there's videos, there's text, there's products, there's all sorts of information that we need to get in order to optimize your Google business profile, which we do for our clients as well. So we then take that information and we use it to create these profiles as well. So something that you'll notice here too, not only does he have reviews, but he's got these other things filled out here. He's got all sorts of other things that he went through on his, on a platform. And again, if you click on his profile, you'll see that there's a significant amount of information here as well. There's a bio, he has his practice areas, he's got how you can pay, he's got different ways that you can meet, he's got yep. his, all these different kind of like professional certifications, associations, publications. So this is all important. And then again, too, these are links that he has here too. So these are now links that help, again, like I said, with SEO. So there's so much benefit to this. Everything that we do for our clients is based on lead generation first, driving phone calls, driving new cases, but there's all sorts of other ancillary benefits as well. What Google really wants, if you want to rank here, they want to see active, real, authoritative law firms. They don't want to show somebody in here who is you know, brand new, who has no real reputation in the space. And these other websites that Google's telling us are powerful because they're ranking them. These searches for Google are worth millions of dollars a year. So if they're ranking these platforms here, we can deduce that Google sees these platforms as authoritative, trustworthy, and good for their results to serve to customers, right? So if you're on here, again, everything triangulates in Google. Google's algorithm is very advanced in understanding and reading all these signals. So if you have these profiles and they're not optimized or you don't have these profiles, you know, step one is just getting them 
up. Step two is getting them optimized. And step three is trying to get some reviews on them in order to flush them through. And again, these are going to rank no matter what. There's nothing that you need to do to get just your super lawyers to rank. Those websites are doing a great job with their own SEO. They're going to rank, but you can do very small things that are going to rank you in there. And again, have that parasite SEO effect on it. Anything else you want to cover on this one, Caesar? No, the only thing I had here as a bullet point that I don't think we covered was the concept of getting like trying to do a two for one when you get a review on Google, trying to get the same person to leave you a review on another platform. So if your law firm needs help with your search marketing or specifically getting listed, getting active, getting reviews on these platforms, we handle all of that for our clients. There's a link below to book a call with myself. We'll go through, we'll do a very deep analysis of your website, of the competition, of the market. We'll show you a roadmap for exactly what we can do and what you need to do to get you on top of search engines and generating more inbound phone calls. That's it for this week. We will see you next time on Lawyer Up and to the Right. Take care.